And now, Death Valley Days. Howdy, folks. I'm the old ranger, and I have another interesting true story for you about the historic Death Valley country. Turn the clock back to May 1850. Set the thermometer at 97 degrees in the swarming, dust-choked camp of Sacramento, and we're ready for the story of California's first ice man. Among the passengers just arrived on the steamer Oregon this sweltering day is young Peter Jeffries of Boston, come out to retrieve his family's fortunes. Hey, what way are you going? Well, Peter Jeffrey. Hello, Mr. Colby. So, you've caught the gold fever too, have you? Welcome to California. <clears throat> well, uh, how'd you travel? Overland? Around the Horn. Uh -huh. Worked my passage. Did your brother come with you? Bob? No, he's back in Boston. We couldn't both of us leave my mother. I know. Under the circumstances. No, I suppose not. Unfortunate, your father's death. But hardly surprising. Oh, I don't know. Men of his age have failed in business before. My father didn't fail, Mr. Colby. He was ruined. Well, it amounts to the same thing. That all depends on where you sit. Oh, I have no doubt your father blamed me for several of his difficulties. But the fact is, Peter, he... he wasn't a very good businessman. Oh, honest as daylight. And loyal. But no imagination. You've got to have imagination to succeed. How do you think I've established myself here in so short a time? By figuring out what people want and can pay for. Say, hey, see here. How'd you like to work for me? For you? I'll be glad to give you a job. Well, thank you, Mr. Colby, but I think I'll look around. All right. Look around. What do you see? I own pretty nearly the whole town. You don't have an own hotel, do you? The Colby House, right across the street. You think over this offer of mine now, unless you want to try your luck up at the diggings. No, I think I'd rather get into some kind of business. You're smart. You know, it's a lot easier to take gold out of a man's pocket than get it out of the ground. You should know, Mr. Colby. <laughs> Chip off the old block. His leg's broken. It's a wonder he wasn't killed. If I could just get him back to my house. Oh, I'll carry him for you. You're very kind. Easy, fella. I'll try not to hurt you. Ah, that's a good boy. I never saw anyone more expert. Where'd you learn to put on a splint? Watching our family doctor once. And then practicing on my dolls. Worth it, breaking a leg, isn't it, fella? I've always wanted to be a nurse, but Uncle Phineas won't hear of it. Uncle Phineas? Mm-hmm, my guardian. Phineas Colby? What's the matter? <laughs> oh, nothing. It's a stifling day, isn't it? Wait till the real midsummer weather hits us. They say it's terrible up at the diggings. Well, that makes a third good reason for staying right here. What are the other two? Business opportunities. Yes, and? Good day, Miss Colby. Thanks for introducing us. Yes, thanks, old fella.
I wish you'd speak to these teamsters of yours, Uncle Phineas. They have no regard for life or limb. I'm paying them to make time. At the risk of killing people? It was only a dog, my dear. But tomorrow it might be a child. This man was driving like the devil was after him. You know what the team was hauling? I didn't even look. Snow. Snow? Yeah, from the high Sierras. What for? The thing men's tongues are hanging out for. Cold drinks. Bert Lawler of the Magnolia Saloon will take all I can deliver at $900 a ton. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> sure it is. I'm going to make a fortune. $900 a ton for snow. Two bits, coal two bucks. Coal one. One whiskey highball. Five dollars. Five dollars? All right. It's highway robbery. But man, it sure good and hits the spot. We work our fingers to the bone digging gold, and then these godgers take it away from us. Five dollars slush. You could drink it without. In all this heat when your hide's cracking? What's yours gonna be, stranger? The same. A greenback. You must have just arrived. Today. Where from? Boston. I'm from Springfield. Well, shake. My name is Peter Jeffries. I'm Steve Griswold, and this is Hank Lewis. To Massachusetts, where snow is free. Gosh, I wish I had a dollar for every shovel full I've dug. Or snowball I've thrown. It's not the same as ice. Nah, it makes your whiskey watery. There's no sound to it. That's half the pleasure of a cold drink, a tinkle of ice. For that, they'd charge you $10 out here, if there was any ice, which there ain't. Well, there must be frozen lakes up in the Sierras. Buried under 20, 30 feet of snow, his snow. What do you mean, his snow? Nobody's got a monopoly on snow. He owns all the wagons, all the teams to haul it, got the Teamsters under contract. Oh, I see. Can you remember as a kid hooking rides on the back of an ice wagon? Sure. And the ice man chasing us off saying he'd report us to the company? Seems like a long ways off. 15,000 miles around the horn. Well, have another drink on me. <laughs> Thanks, but there's a letter I want to get off tonight. To your girl? <laughs> My brother. In Boston. Glad to meet you. Don't say I'm crazy, Bob. If ice will keep in Boston ice houses all summer, it should keep in holes of ships. And will be worth its weight in gold out here. Borrow the necessary capital for the first shipment. But act fast. The hot weather has already hit Sacramento. We can recoup the family fortune together. You at that end, and I here. Good afternoon, Miss Covey. Oh, mister, I never did learn your name the other day. Peter Jeffries. Let me take your things. Come in. I just stopped by to inquire about the dog. He's doing beautifully. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to get rid of him. Now, he knows a good thing when he sees it. <laughs> oh, Uncle Phineas. This is the young man I was telling you about, who was so kind. 
Hello, Peter. Good afternoon, Mr. Colby. You've already met? The first day he was here. Before that, in Boston. Well, why didn't you tell me? I, uh, just didn't get around to it. Well, young man, have you decided what you're going to do yet? Yes, sir. Good. I thought you'd see the light. I'm going up to the diggings. You are? Why? It seems a good idea. You mean you don't want to work for me? You can't find anything else around here, is that it? You're a fool, Peter. Stiff-necked, no imagination. Your father all over. Let's leave my father out of this, sir. All right. Go up to the diggings. Break your back with a pick and shovel. Break your heart washing gravel. I thought I was doing you a favor. I'm going over to Magnolia. Arrange for another shipment of snow. Last week, mosquitoes. What do you say we call it a day? Yeah, day wasted. Don't get discouraged now. Uh, it beats me how two fellows mining side by side can have such different luck. Oh, not that I forgot you a single ounce of dust, Steve, but it just doesn't make sense. What you need is a long, cold drink. Come on, let's head for the Magnolia. Well, I have no money to blow on Colby Frappes. But I'll go to town with you anyway and see if there's any mail for me. I'm expecting a letter from my brother. Miss Colby. Well, it's been a long time. Let me carry this for you. Get some food I'm taking to a woman that's sick. Always looking for someone to nurse. I don't have to look very far these days. Sacramento's full of fever. So I've heard. This is my first trip down. I hope you're making out well in the gold fields. Not very. In fact, not well at all. But you're going to stick it out? Until my ship comes in. Some people wait all their lives for that, Mr. Jeffries. You're trying to discourage me? I do think it was short-sighted of you not to accept my uncle's offer. Still in the snow business, I see. Yes, the wagons come down twice a week. Tons of frozen assets. I'll relieve you of that now, Mr. Jeffries. Thank you. My regards to the Snow King. Get your letter? No. I can't understand it. I'm not sure I'd hear by now. Well, I'll drown your sorrows. What'll it be? The same. Seven dollars. Seven dollars? It was five the last time I was in here. Well, it's gone up to seven now. Well, why? Because the price of snow's gone up that time. I won't pay it. You buzzards. Picking these fellas clean. You ought to be shot. If you don't like it, get out of here. I'm going to. See you up at the digging, Steve. It falleth as a gentle dew from heaven above. <laughs> Will you do something for me, Uncle Phineas? What do you want? A load of snow. A load of snow? What for? The sick. My dear Laura. The fever's spreading all over town, Uncle Phineas. Folks burning up with it. If they could just have some snow packs to relieve their suffering. Do you realize what snow is worth? Can't you think of anything but money, Uncle Phineas? Now, Laura, dear, you're overwrought. I think you should give up this fool idea of nursing everybody. How can I, when people are dying all around me? There's always sickness in gold camps. Sacramento is no exception. Oh, you're heartless, callous, cold as snow yourself. Colder, 
Snow at least melts. Flying Cloud made it in 80 days from New York. That was a record, of course. Took our ship three months from Boston. What are you talking about? A trip around the Horn. My brother got my letter in June. I'm beginning to wonder if he did. And here it is the end of August. 27th, isn't it? Steve? Steve, what's the matter? Sick. Fever. I know, you're burning up. <sighs> oh, dear God, if only I had some ice. <sighs> Pistols. That's what this town is. Only way a man can keep going is to keep drinking. Give me another one. Ten dollars. Here, take it all. You better have it as well as the undertaker. Here comes another wagon load of snow. Hey, young lady, what are you doing? You have no right to that snow. It belongs to me. It belongs to my uncle. Oh, you're Miss Cope. Well, he's selling it to me, and I'm paying you $1,500 for it. $1,800. Laura, get away from that wagon. What kind of behavior is this? You have no right to that snow. That's what I told her. Now, you put it back pronto. It's our snow. It's God's snow, and I'm using it in his name. Now, get out of my way before it all melts. Miss Colby. Here, let me help you. Oh, thank you. Where are you taking this? Right here to Pioneer Hall. We've turned it into sort of a hospital. Things are pretty bad down here, I understand. Perfectly terrible. They reached the diggings, too. Steve Griswold was hit by it. Dropped right in his tracks. Did he pull through? More by good luck than good nursing. Mm, we sure long for you. There's so little even I can do. If I only had some ice with which to fight this fever. Oh, this is better than nothing. And I had to steal this. But what I need is real ice, and lots of it. I sympathize with you, Miss Clovey. There's nothing in the world I'd like to see myself right now and a whole shipload of ice. Thank you very much, Mr. Jeffrey. What in heaven's name has happened? Couldn't you raise the money for the first shipment? It's been five months now, and not a word. The heat here will soon break, and I'm already broke. Just enough to buy a stamp 
for this letter. In all my life, I never saw men go for liquor like this. You've never lived through an epidemic before. They're panicked. You just keep the snow coming, Mr. Colby. But if instead of just one wagon load arriving, what would you say if a whole wagon train load of snow pulled in here? I say we'd make a killing. <laughs> then you'd better get ready, because it's on its way. Colby, that's wonderful. Huh? Yeah, I've commandeered everything on four wheels, and every four-legged critter that can pull them. I've hired teamsters at double pay and a crew of shovelers. I've sent along an armed guard to protect them, because we've got to go all the way up to Echo Summit, 7,000 feet to get snow now. Must cost you a fortune. I'll get it back. This snow's going to sell for $2,000 a ton. A dollar, a pound? You can collect it from those suckers there. You know, they'll pay anything as long as they're afraid for their lives. You have got nerve. <laughs> Just takes imagination, like I told that young upstart, Peter Jeffries. Well, I'm going to run up by horseback in the morning and see how things are going. I'll be waiting for you, partner. Peter! Merchantman from Boston just docked. She's got a consignment aboard for you. For me? Yeah. Where is she? Front Street, foot of K. The captain said I. He must have meant right. One at a time, folks. There's plenty to go around. At fair prices. Yeah! Once more, from now on, every ship out of Boston will be carrying ice to California. Yeah! May I buy a cake of ice, please? Not for me, Miss Colby. Well, I'll pay whatever you're charging. Well, for you, there is no charge. You're welcome to all the ice you need for the sick. Oh, Mr. Jeffries, thank you. Steve, one cake of ice for Miss Colby. Hail the conquering hero. The wagon train's on the way down from the mountains. Twenty thousand dollars worth of snow. Bert, you're going to make more money. Hey, was that ice? That was ice. Where'd it come from? Boston. Boston? What are you talking about? A whole shipload just docked. Consigned to Peter Jeffries. Jeffries? The young man with no imagination. Everybody in Sacramento was down there buying from him. But our snow. Who's going to want snow when they can get ice? Well, I've, sunk a, I've sunk a fortune in that wagon train. All my profits from the past summer. I'm, being, I'm ruined. How about a drink? There's plenty of room at the bar. Real cold. Listen to that, will you? Real honest to gosh ice. Here's to Peter Jeffries, California's first ice man. There hasn't been such excitement since gold was discovered. Well, you could have charged any price and got away with it. I'm not sure Uncle Phineas. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Oh, that's all right. At this point, I'm not very proud of myself of the name Colby. If you'd like to change it, it could be easily arranged. But Laura, look at me. Will you? Are you asking me to marry you? I love you, Laura. I scarcely know you. All I know is that, that you're a nice man. Did you say a nice man? The nicest man I've ever met. So that leaves Phineas Colby, the former Snow King, and his sidekick, Bill Lawler, watching from the doorway of the Magnolia Saloon as their ill-gotten profits melt inexorably away. <laughs> 